Sup nerds, I'm Tom. I'm Wes. Let's talk about some spooky stuff. So just so you know, we actually have a bit of a complicated history with Arkham Horror. So back when we first started ever playing games in 2013, which sounds like forever ago. It was one of the first games it, you ever bought. Because we played like Munchkin and it was even like before we played Lords of Waterdeep. Somebody said... Here's was Lords it of Waterdeep. Or is it right afterwards of Waterdeep? I think it was before, because I remember the guy was trying, somebody at a game store, and was brand new, was trying to explain to me new games to play, and he was pitching to me Lords of Waterdeep, and then I was like, ooh, this one looks cool, and he's like, oh yeah, that one's also really cool. Um, not really understanding that we would have, like, we, like, weren't able to handle it. You know, at yeah. that time, it was, like, way over our heads. Um, but I guess, uh, more importantly to say this, is that we're, we're going to mostly talk about Arkham Horror 3rd Edition almost as brand new players like not really compared to the second edition because it's been forever since we've played that yeah and really it's been forever since i've played eldritch horror at least like a couple of years so it's been a, we've been away from the arkham series for a while we decided to start seeing other games you know, i know but like even the um the card game it's been a while three years at least since i played the lcg it was three years ago the LCG came out? So in Arkham Horror, you do still have the overarching theme of you've got an elder one who's invading, and you are investigators, and you've got to figure out what you need to do to stop the elder one from coming in. Like all the other Arkham games, this game is so hard. Yes, <laughs> this one is really hardcore. Um, now, and, and to its credit, though, I think in this one, it has a little bit more flexibility where you can alter the rules a bit to your liking if you want to. So, like, one of the things we were talking about is uh, there's a, a bag of bad stuff that happens. Um, oh, negative number one. There is not a bag of bad no stuff. There is no bag. There are tokens that it wants you to put in a cup and draw from the token cup. Mm -hmm. The game should come with a bag. It really should. This is an Eagle Griffin bag because they didn't send us a bag to right. play this game with. I know, right? But, uh, but like, so you always draw, like, the players two will draw two. Right, but you could do one per player. Yeah, it's it's to... every player draws two, and right. they're almost all bad stuff happening. Mm -hmm. And the, like, even without that, the game would probably be pretty difficult. And then they're like, let's just throw more bad stuff at you. Right, but what you do is you move around the board, and you are uh, trying to pick up clue tokens, uh, fight monsters, or clear doom. That's sort of like the pandemic thing. Like in, pa in most co-op games, there's always like two things going on at the same time that you got to juggle. Right, in pandemic, you want to clear off the cubes all while trying to find the cure right so yeah. here you want to fight off monsters and remove doom tokens all the while collecting clue tokens or doing whatever it is usually surrounding clue tokens that the particular scenario is telling you to do um, but a lot of the actions you take are actually checks where you roll as number of dice based off of a stat you have on your yeah. character to try and get a certain number of successes yeah and, and i do like the game is very story based so it's not just thematic but there are stories that you are playing, and when you start the game, if it's your first time fighting this Elder God, this old one, you don't know how to win the game. Mm -hmm. Like, you go into it of, this bad thing happened, we're trying to figure out what's going on. And it gives you a goal of, go out and get these clue tokens, or go out and fight this monster. And a lot of times there's like a, if you get to this, part, this much bad, or this much good, the story progresses. It's like a timer of... We'll see how it happens, and then that may affect the next step of the story. But a lot of times, there's like three or four steps before you actually get to where you can win the game. So you don't know what's happening. It's like, okay, you're doing this, and then put this card over, and then you read. There's a lot of flavor mm -hmm. text, and then the game changes. Oh, we were getting those clue tokens, and now we can use those tokens we got to try to go close this thing, or this thing's happening, or now this new cult approached us, and they and want us to join. This new big, mo big bad monster came up. we got to deal with that. Um, so it, it, it unfolds before you as you're playing it. But it is a very big, it's a good mix of strategy and story, or yeah. even luck with the die rolling. You know, It's not like um, you know a little splash of here's some story, here's a little bit of story to have fun with. It's like, I'm going to strategically end my turn here, because I know when I have an encounter in the encounter phase, it's very likely that I'll be able to get a spell, or that I'll be able to get money, you know? Mm -hmm. It still may not even happen because you may have to roll a check or something and, and pass that test. I do um, love that with this game, that each location, like, it says, you're probably going to need this to get that. So you yeah. can kind of go, ooh, I really need to heal. What's a good place to heal? Oh, this is a good place to heal, but or to get sanity back, but I don't need money. So make sure I get money before I go there. In the Arkham Horror 2nd Edition, I do remember that the locations told you 
mostly what you would get. Like it would show sanity or something, but I don't know if it told you would what, what you needed to spend. spend. The only and the other thing that I remember about from the second edition that when I first saw the third edition, I was like, oh, that is a bit of a detractor for me. Is the board? This modular board is more variety, and that's cool. I like that. But for some reason, it really takes me out of the theme. I'm very aware that this is a board, these puzzle piece things, you know. Yeah. The actually other Arkham Horror board looked like a town, and you were just moving up and down this town, you know, and it really felt more contained, like, you know, it, even like Elder Tour was like you're moving around the world, yeah. but here you're like, oh, we're stuck in this one town, we just gotta go down this street, and there's a monster right there in front of me, in the alley, you and, know? and I don't know if the variety it adds really benefits the game all that much. Like, I, and I'm sure there's a lot of design space, they figured it out, but like, you still have the one town that you're in. It's just like, well, now South Side's over here and Uptown's over there instead of over here. Like, so you can kind of like make it. It takes you a little bit longer. You get over there. These places are more connected. I, I would say it's probably increases the design space for like expansion. So like an expansion yeah. could have more modular boards, whereas expansions for the other version had like other boards. boards. Yeah, had like sideboards, and they had to connect in weird, funky ways. If I'm if, again, if I'm remembering this correctly. I know in Eldritch they had like the Ala- the Alaska uh, Alaska um, Antarctica Antarctica the other a the snowy place that no one wants to right, go right right again if what we're saying doesn't sound right to you if you're veterans of this stuff please tell us in the comments what we've got wrong because again it's been a long time since we've played those other types of games um, so it's hard to really compare but like little things little things are jumping out at me like oh, okay yeah this this does seem familiar like clue tokens of course um, but also I do just. This is a type of game that we really don't get to play very often. A game Mm -hmm. that's kind of role-playing-esque with the rolling of the dice. You know, like, think about um, the Pathfinder card game that we played. It was kind of similar to that of, like, ooh, this is like a hybrid we don't really see much anymore, you know? Yeah, where you've got your stats, you've got your character that you're moving around the board. You get gear to upgrade them because you can, like focus a stat to increase it temporarily, but you can't mm-hmm. just, like, straight up level up your character. Right. But you can get equipment cards that kind of level them up or give you... You can move faster, jump higher. Run faster, <laughs> jump higher. Man! <laughs> so in the base game box, you do get... You get four different scenarios, which, again, can, like, go in different avenues if you make different choices and mm-hmm. stuff. And you get, like, 12 different characters. Yeah. So you get a, a decent amount of value in the base game alone. Yeah, saying there's four characters, like, there's four old ones you play, that's not like there's four games. Because, realistically, this is a co-op game that you are going to lose. Like, right. if you don't, if you're not okay losing games, this is not a game for you. Because, typically, it's like, we play this old one, and we lose. Like, okay... We, we, this character didn't really have a whole lot going on, so I'm going to swap it out for this character and try this avenue. We try yeah. again. We get a little further. All right, let's modify our strategy a little bit. And it may take you three or four games before you actually beat that old one and want to move on to the next Unless one. Unless you just so happen to have a bunch of ball and dice rolls, like every single roll. Six, 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 six. You're just like, oh man, all these successes. Look at that. But boom. I know Wes was saying that this is a game that's really, really hard and difficult to win, but I think like the... Arkham Horror, the original one, was initially, was, like, notoriously difficult to win as well. You know, I mean, and I'm okay with uh, playing co-ops that are really, really hard, or modifying it slightly so it's a little bit easier, again, if you're playing with newer players. And I I definitely wasn't saying that as a negative, more of, like, a disclaimer. Like, just so you know, like, this this is the kind of co-op that is punishing, that you're going to go in and it's going to kick your butt, and then you're going to need to get better to develop real strategy to beat it. It's not something you're just going to like throw wet noodles at the wall and see what sticks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and but I, I really love this game mainly because it's, it's such a huge like nostalgia factor for me yeah. because it was like the first game we ever, first like big game we ever really tried to tackle. But also, also it is also the type of game that like got me into board gaming. The ultra nerdy, extremely thematic, very saturated colors, you know, the spooky nature of it, the role playing nature of it. It really, like, when we got into board games, it was the very nerdy, nerdy aspect of it, of being, like, you know, again, heavily thematic. I'm getting into character. I'm going to do this. Not just I'm going to get points because I, I, I built a wheat farm, you know, but, like, yeah. really jumping into the character and really getting into the story of drawing cards. It's like, ooh, what are you going to do? Are you going to help these guys out? Or are you going to run away, you know? This is a type of game that I probably won't get to play all that often um, because, you know... it. While I love this role-playing mixed with strategy type thing, not necessarily everybody will, 
but it's a game that I will always have a blast playing because I don't know. This is just this is bringing back 2013 Tom. Absolutely. Th this is the kind of game that I would be excited. Like, hey, tonight come over. We're gonna like act like. Me and you and Ray are going to get together and play Arkham Horror tonight. We're going like to put it's not, candles, Hey, you know? game night, tell your friends, tell your girlfriend, tell your mom, <laughs> tell, your, tell girlfriend's your girlfriend's mom. mom. Like, bring whoever you want. Yeah, you can bring the kids, you know? Like, it's like, no, it's like hey, plan we're this settling in. Yeah, like, this yeah. is what we're doing tonight. And, and those are the game nights that really got us into board gaming. And, like, I'd be down for that. So if any of what we were talking about in this video sounds interesting to you, we are going to put a purchase link to this game and probably some of the expansions if they're out in the description box down below. We're also going to have a link to this E-Raptor insert that we have on the table. Definitely check it out if you're looking for a custom insert for Arkham Horror. If you're also looking for a table for you to play your games on, we've got a link in the description box for Game Toppers. It's not a table, but it goes on top of your table, so it's cheaper. If you're also looking for a new YouTube channel to subscribe to, there's going to be a subscribe button down below below if you click on it and then you click on the bell and then you toggle notifications to all you can see every single one of our channels and that way our channels, our channels are <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and that yeah, way you'll never be bored, never be bored. <laughs>